It's the holidays and Star Wars Rogue One is finally here. Are you ready? Happy Holidays everyone, Logan Myers here to talk about Gareth Edwards' brand new film in the Star Wars universe, Rogue One. So I'm not going to lie, uh, this is the only movie I've been highly anticipating all year long. I am a huge Star Wars fan, I have been my whole life, so each year they're putting out a Star Wars film in December, and I can't tell you how excited I am. I have a fucking Han Solo tattoo on my leg. That's how much of a fan I have I am and always have been. Um, you know, Rogue One is a, a standalone film in the Star Wars universe directed by Gareth Edwards, who also directed uh, 2014's Godzilla, which was also an excellent film. So with the first trailer being released earlier this year, you know, there's high anticipation as to what this film is going to be like, you know, and it's on standalone film. And with the early trailers, you can just feel this grittiness, this dark palette that they're using with, you know, a different storyline. And you can tell that it was going to be different and darker and grungier. And Rogue One is pretty much a prequel to Episode 4, A New Hope. This takes place right before that film starts out. And this is the first Star Wars film they haven't had the opening crawl. In the beginning of the film, you'll see in a galaxy far, far away, um, I couldn't even describe how excited I was. I was on the edge of my seat, uh, white knuckles, just holding on for dear life because I didn't know what I was going to be experiencing with this film. So as we recall in A New Hope Episode 4, Leia has the Death Star plans, but we got to figure out how she got these plans. And basically this is where that movie takes place. Um, Galen Orso, played by the GQ Man of the Year, Mads Mikkelsen um, is an engineer scientist and he's forced into making the Death Star this this weapon of mass destruction but we'd later find out is the Death Star and he's so smart and he has to put together this this weapon and he really doesn't want to he wants to stay with his family and his little young daughter and Galen is forced into working to get this weapon of mass destruction up and running to to take out planets. I mean, that's the whole purpose of this this weapon. And Krennic, played by Ben Mendelsohn, shows up and basically takes Galen away from his family. He has to come finish off the Death Star and make sure it's working so they can start using their powers and taking out all these planets throughout the galaxy. Um, Galen is taken away from his young daughter, which we find out is Jin Orso, the main actress in this film, played by Felicity Jones. And she doesn't see her dad for years, not sure if he's alive or not. And really how the film starts out, the first act of the film is, is a little slow, but you're introducing a lot of characters that we don't know yet. So it worked for the most part. And Forrest Whitaker had uh, a, a pretty big part in the beginning of the film. He plays Saw Guerrera. He finds young Jen um, as a child and takes her in and raises her. Um, and it's kind of funny because Forrest Whitaker has like a really raspy voice. Jen, come with me. And he's like all robotic. And then over the years, you know, Jen grows up to be a young woman and, um, you know, introduces some other rebels into this film, such as Diego Luna. We have Riz Ahmed that plays Bodhi the pilot. Bodhi is also my son's name, which is also really cool that they threw into the movie. Um, he was also excellent in The Night Of on HBO and in Nightcrawler, starring Jake Gyllenhaal. So check those out if you haven't seen them. Um, one of the most badass characters and one of my favorites in the film was Donnie Yen. He was like Morgan from The Walking Dead, and but he was blind. Uh, never really shot any guns. He just had a stick and he'd walk around and like, <laughs> beating the shit out of all these stormtroopers. And he had a few comedic parts where they're blindfolding him, but he's blind, so he's like making fun of that. And we have the introduction of a brand new droid in the Star Wars Galaxy K2SO. Alan Tudyk did the voice of the droid, and he was probably the, the funniest character in the whole movie. I mean, from start to finish, his sarcasm, his dry sense of humor, really, really made me laugh, and it, it kind of lightened up the darker storyline in this film. Basically, the rest of the story is these group of rebels, led by Jin, um, basically going to find the, the Death Star uh, plans, the schematics, really, and that's 
the story and as it builds up. Um, in the second and third act, there's a lot more action. The set design, the production design, the CGI was profound and it was beautiful. It was top notch. Um, I mean, the sequences up in space, uh, you see the AT-ATs on the beach, like, <laughs> like shooting, and uh, them going through the jungle area. I mean, just these awesome, awesome battle scenes. Um, and if you've seen the trailer, you, you catch a little glimpse of that, where you see the stormtroopers walking in the, the water. And, and in Rogue One, there's definitely a lot of Star Wars throwbacks, you know, to obviously New Hope, um, Empire Strikes Back. Um, and there's a few recurring characters from the original films. One, I'm not gonna say, they used a lot of CGI in that character. Um, and it was one of the things that was offsetting with this film. I didn't really buy it. Um, I think they could have done better camera work instead of using the CGI character that, uh, from the original films. But the most important character, one of the biggest and most popular villains of all fucking time, the one and, one and only Darth Vader. <laughs> So if you've been following the trailers like everybody else in the world this, this past year, you know Darth Vader's in Rogue One. Um, you know, it was a big ordeal when they, when they first showed him in the trailer. So, we, you know, as an audience, we didn't know how big of a part he would be in this film. And I will say it wasn't major. It was in a few parts, but those parts really made a difference and showcased the, the best and most badass villain of our time. You know, in the Empire, you know, the, the chain of command, it's one commander to the next, to the next, to the Vader. And Ben Mendelsohn was pretty convincing as Krennic. He was like lore on the totem pole and he was in charge of this whole Death Star build. Um, you know, for the most part, I liked his character, but I think he was a little underutilized. They just made him kind of out to be a bitch and just like yelling, like, shoot, you know, kill him. If they would have worked on his character a little better, I think he would have been more uh, vicious and a better villain, but in this film, not really so much, which was kind of depressing because I wanted his character be character to be, you know, just a major badass and one of the, the famous villains that they'll have in this universe. So when we finally get to see Darth Vader, I mean, his presence is fucking badass. We, you know, he's the character that we know from uh, episode four, five, and six. You know, he's just getting started, but he has these fucking badass powers. There's this one scene down the hall, he's just taking people out. And you know, I was like, I want more, but there wasn't enough Vader. So they kind of just give you a little sip of it, a little taste, but that's about it. And you know, with the overall fight sequences that were leading up to the final act, you know, the rebels trying to get the, the Death Star plans, you know, you can guess as to what happens if it leads into the next movie, which we all know what happens with that. And the ending of the film, you can guess if Jin and her group of rebels beat all the stormtroopers and, and get what they're there for and that's the Death Star plans. And Rogue One surpassed my expectations. It was a fucking excellent film from start to finish. Beautifully scored film by Michael Giacchino. I meant the CGI was probably the best of any movies in a long time, this past year at least. And with the introduction of all these characters in the film, you really start to like them. There's one um, character, Jin, that they really focus on. The other characters they don't say much about. They just introduce them, which was something I didn't really care for. I wish they would uh, you know, use more of the character de development and stories with the other rebels. You know, Gareth Edwards is a huge Star Wars fan and it really shows in this film. He did his extra work to make this, this a masterpiece. I think this is gonna be a film we're gonna be looking back at 15 years from now and saying like, wow, that's a really, really excellent film. What did you guys think of Rogue One? Did you see it this weekend? Were you one of the billions out there in the movie theaters to a packed movie theater to see Star Wars? to feel your inner child and inner nerd. Let us know in the comments below. And if uh, what else are you looking forward to in the Star Wars universe? Are you looking forward to episode eight, the new Han Solo standalone film coming out in a few years? I know I'm excited for that. I am giving Rogue One a four and a half hair pieces out of five. No! And I just wanna say thank you to everybody that keeps following us on our social media pages and our YouTube channel right here. We're going to keep doing what we love, talk about movies and TV and interviewing writers, directors, and all that stuff. And we have a brand new podcast coming out in the coming weeks and a brand new website. So stay tuned for all of that. This is Logan Meyer signing out from Cinefellas. I'll see you next time. Cheese!